Emily Sheehan joining us from the University of Scranton women's basketball team. And uh, Emily, this team is so young this year, um, but we're not seeing that on the court, maybe early in the season, but uh, playing some season ball right now. Yep, um, we had a rocky start to the beginning, but um, we really came together as a team and we're doing really well right now. So hopefully we fi finish that out. Let's talk about what you think is going well at the University of Scranton. Um, I think our team chemistry is really well. Um, we learned from our one loss that we had early in the season. And ever since then, we really focused on what we needed to do better. And so we've been having really consistent games so far. So, yeah, how, about, you know. how about your ball game? Talk in particular about what you think you're doing well. Um, I mean, I'm, I think my strength is defense. So I'm usually on the best player on the other team. So that's basically what my role is on the team. Um, and then other than that, I really just look to pass the open player, get all my teammates involved. Amanda and Hannah, a couple of siblings, so tell us about each of them, what they're up to. Uh, Amanda, she's 22. She's at Misericordia. She actually just started her first year of PT school, so she's pretty busy now. And Hannah, she's a sophomore at Delmar High School, and she's a cheerleader. That's pretty cool. Let's talk about your uh, subjects that you're enjoying and, and the major that you're looking to do uh, at the University of Scranton for a career down the road. Uh, I'm an exercise science major, so I love anatomy and physiology and all of those um, science courses. And hopefully um, I can get into PT school somewhere and become PT one day. Your parents, uh, let's talk about their role in your life and then them pushing you along. Uh, my parents have been so supportive of me since I was since I was a baby and they've always been there to support me through the good and bad times and I owe everything to them. Talk about little things you continue to work on with your basketball game and things you're seeing in this league that you're playing in the Landmark Conference. Pretty challenging. Yeah, um, this, this year the conference is very um, competitive so every game I try and just come out and do the best that I can for that game and depending on who the opponent is and what the game plan is I just try and do my best to stick to the plan. I'm sure growing up uh, you, you weren't sure what was going to happen as far as college life, where you were going to be, what you were going to do. Mm -hmm. um, what's it like being right down the road at the University of Scranton? Uh, you know, families close, people could come see you play, not too far to get to classes. Yeah, um, well I actually live on campus so it's nice because I'm I'm away from home but I'm still really close to home and when I'm at campus and I'm in school and in class I don't even feel like I'm five minutes away from home and my grandparents are really big supporters of my basketball career so it's really easy for them to come to games so that's, that's a plus too. Any life lessons you take from your grandparents or little things they still maybe tell you after a game before a game I'm sure uh, being as grandparents are they're probably proud of you whether you score two <laughs> points or you win or you lose but yeah. Uh, what, are, what are a thing or two you take from them? Well, they tell me every game, whether it's good or bad, that it was I played awesome. So it's good because they're very positive and they have a very positive outlook. So I definitely take that with me, and I know that the next game, then I'm going to try and do my best, too. Well, Emily, thanks for uh, talking to us today and continued success at the U. Thanks for having me. Bridget Mann is with us from the University of Scranton Women's Basketball here on the John Mandola Show. And, uh, Bridget, let's talk about the, the game in high school for you, not too far away. What was it like? Um, I mean, it's great being local um, because, you know, my family gets to come and support me. They're at basically every single game. Um, a lot of my friends over intercession get to come home and watch. Um, so it really is something special to be able to say that you live, you're at school, that, but you live so close to home. Expectations at the University of Scranton are high. Coach Rudriff keeps them really high uh, yeah. as well. Talk about playing for him and what the, the demands he has and you trying to meet them. Yeah, he's definitely the smartest coach by far that I've ever played for. Um, just the plays he draws up and the confidence he has in his players is something that I commend him for a lot. Um, you know, he was brought into a very uh, stressful situation because the tradition is so, it's held to such a high standard at Scranton. Um, but he's upheld it so great, and I think he's doing a tremendous job. Talk about this year and, and how it started. And now where we're at as uh, we're getting a little closer here in February yeah. to, to Valentine's Day. Talk about what it's been like. Um, it's, been a, it's been a ride, and it's been one of the greatest rides we've ever had. Um, you know, this team is so close, and we're all each other's best friends. And to be able to play on the court with your best friends, you know, through the lows and the highs, you go through it together, and it just makes it that much easier to go through those things, but even sweeter when you get the victories 
and uh, especially coming up with playoffs, you know, we're all hungry for the same thing, and we know exactly what we want. Well, you're uh, you're involved in a lot of clubs <laughs> yeah. uh, at college, which is not something that's real easy. But to talk about just being as busy as you are at the University of Scranton, um, it's definitely challenging, but uh, it's also rewarding at the same time to be able to say that you know you took advantage of every opportunity that the school uh, gave you and you know basketball and all the clubs I'm involved really helps me a lot with my time management skills um, which will be really helpful for eventually when I want to apply to dental school. And let's talk about that next step for you uh, dental school yep. and, you know you have a thought on hey I'd like to do something locally or? Um, honestly I think it's going to be wherever the road takes me. Um, I've always thought about coming back home and you know starting my own practice and that would some be something that I'm really interested in doing. Um, but again, I think it's all, I'm just going to let things pan out and see where things go. Chelsea and Nikki, uh, talk about both of them and your family. Yep, they are uh, both my older sisters, and they're two of the best friends I could ever ask for. Um, Nikki played softball at Kutztown. Chelsea played field hockey at Monmouth, ended up getting hurt and transferred to Kane University in New Jersey. Um, so to have two older sisters with you know, the legacy that they've kind of upheld through high school and college is something that I really strive, you know, to accomplish as well. How about the folks and uh, what they do for you and continue to do for you here in college? I'd never be able to thank them enough for everything they do for me. Um, they are two of my biggest supporters and, you know, they don't ask for anything in return but love and they're just, they're awesome. Well, it sounds like you're, uh, you're well-grounded, uh, you're motivated, and you got a lot of talent. You got a lot going for you. You keep up uh, what you're doing, and we we'll wish you the best as a as a dentist down the road. Thank you very much. Katie Fury is with us from the University of Scranton Women's Basketball Program. She is a senior. And uh, Katie, let's talk about uh, the contributions you're making for your team. And uh, are you surprised right now, and how well everybody's come together? Um, no, not surprised. I think we have a lot of good team chemistry. Uh, we get along on and off the court. We all basically spend like the whole day together if we're not at practice together. We're all eating lunch together. So uh, we have a really good bond, and I think that shows on the court as well. And how about for you? Uh, what do you think you're doing well this year? Um, well, I'm coming uh, off the bench, so I think just being able to go into the game and keep up with how they're all playing and maybe just be a spark is just kind of the role that I've been able to ha handle. How about some uh, younger players this year stepping up their game? Uh, mm -hmm. What have you seen? Um, they're all stepping up their game. I mean, we graduated some important players, so everybody knew they had to step it up, and very impressed with what they're all doing, so very happy. <laughs> Overall, your experience at the University of Scranton, what's it been like as a student and as an athlete? Um, honestly, I'm so happy I came here. I couldn't imagine being anywhere else between the friendships I've made through basketball and just through um, school. It's just a like, really happy place to be. Well, uh, you're into uh, uh, healthcare field, so yes. let's talk about what, what's down the road for you. Um, so I'm a health administration major, so um, hopefully, again, come out of school, get a job, and then I eventually want to go back and get my master's, but right now I'm trying to find somewhere in the Philadelphia area close to home, so that's the plan. Got a couple older uh, siblings, so tell us about uh, what they have done to help pave the way for, for you and your experiences. And, Sometimes we learn through our own, and sometimes uh, our brother or sister may help us. So, uh, how about you? Yeah. So, um, well, my brother, and my brother is Jerry. He's a uh, he's older than me. He's thirty. So he went to the Naval Academy. Um, he actually played on the sprint football team. And his senior year, he um, got asked to play on the varsity team. So that was really uh, influential. He just worked really hard, and seeing that really helped me. And then my sister, she's twenty nine years old. She went to Drexel. And she's a nurse, and she's actually doing traveling nursing right now. So she lives in Seattle, but um, she well, works really hard, too. So <laughs> Well-rounded. That's pretty yeah. neat. And, uh, they're all over the place. How about the, your parents uh, and their influence on you? Um, they've just always been super supportive, no matter what. They're when you're little, doing all the AAU tournaments and throughout high school. And they come to every game. My dad's in the stands leading all the cheers. So it's really nice just to have their support with everything. 
How about the, some stuff you're involved with at the University of Scranton other than sports and academics? What are you involved with? Um, well, I'm in the Omega Beta Sigma Honor Society. It's a business honor society, so I'm in that. And we just do like little things, like little fundraisers, which is good. Right, Katie, well, thanks for uh, telling us your story. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Katie Broderick is with us here on the John Mandola Show from the University of Scranton Women's Basketball Program at uh, our Carol and Janelle in Old Forge. Uh, Katie, let's talk a little bit about your role on the team. Um, yeah, so I'm a senior captain on the team this year. Um, I'm a shooting guard. Um, so basically, I, I'm a starter and I'm there for the team, all the little things we do on the court, um, just playing hard on defense every possession, hitting a shot here and there when we need it, um, a pass into the post, just all the little things I like to focus on and make an impact wherever I can. A lot of bigger things off the court because this is such a young team. I'm sure you have to kind of carry uh, the girls a little bit in that way. So talk about some things you try to do, uh, whether it's bonding wise or just kind of, you know, show them the way at the University of Scranton as a senior. You have a few years of, uh, of experience, right? Yeah, you know, we only have three or four upperclassmen. So um, I think that was a huge adjustment. And it was tough at the beginning of the year, just getting everyone to understand their role, both on and off the court and um, growing as a team, becoming a family. And a huge advantage we have is um, the entire month of January, we're off from classes. So I think that's where each year we grow and um, these girls are my best friends and we've really become really close and I think that's where you see our, our success coming from. So it's, it's a great team to be a part of. How has this team grown this year? Talk about some of the, the early days in November and December and now here we are in February. Yeah, I think as you said earlier, um, it was it was a tough turnaround coming off of last year. We had a lot more veteran experience and leadership, so I think everyone just expanding their role and prov um, providing their role for the team and um, increasing their performance both on and off the court um, and just gaining confidence as we got more practices under our belt. You know, we have five or six freshmen um, who had to come in and learn a whole new system, and our sophomores really stepped up this year, so I think as we got more experience playing together, that really helped our um, performance increase. Coach Woodruff, uh, let's talk about him and stepping up as, as the women have stepped up at the U this year. Would you say there's more time off the court with looking at film? Was there more time on the court? Was it more efficient time on the court? What was happening during that time when there was some growth? Yeah, I think it's just understanding where we need more reps and, or more focusing on um, you know, learning our defensive, princi defensive principles because that's where um, we get our offense from and that's what drives us to play well every game if our defense is on. Um, we know we can bring that anywhere, so just understanding the principles and how um, Scranton plays defense. Um, well, you got uh, two siblings, Jack and Shannon. Yeah. So tell us about each of them. Uh, my brother Jack, he's a sophomore at Scranton as well, so he followed me there. <laughs> I like to joke around with him about um, he's a nursing major. And then my younger sister is a senior in high school, and she plays field hockey and lacrosse. So. Awesome. And uh, tell us where you call home. Um, I'm from New Fairfield, Connecticut, so a little farther away from everyone. But Graduate school, physical therapy down the road? Yeah, so I'll be staying at Scranton for an extra three years starting in the summer, so I'll be around. Let's talk about mom and dad and uh, their support for you. Yeah, you know, they're, they're my biggest fans. Um, I can probably count them on less than a hand, like less than five fingers how many games they've missed over the last four years so I'm so grateful for them and all their support over yeah. the years. You guys like playing Catholic University big rival. Yeah. What is it about Catholic that, that brings out your best and their best? You know I think over the years we just we battle every every time on the court you know it's not going to be a one-sided um, score so I think I, we enjoy playing in those big games they enjoy playing in them. We've played them the last two years in the landmark championship so it's an easy game to get up for so we love those big moments. Katie Broderick, thanks for sharing your story, and uh, we wish you continued success down the road, and good luck the rest of the season. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Trevor Woodruff joining us from the University of Scranton Women's Basketball Program, and uh, Coach, let's talk about this team, and uh, I know you're really proud of them. Um, back in November, got to see you play, and talk about the growth. Yeah. November, December, January, here we are in February, and they're a pretty good run right now. Yeah, I think this team, uh, in my opinion, has probably develop more through the course of a season than, than probably any I've coached. Um, you know, I, uh, we lost a lot last year. Uh, two All-Americans, uh, their backup. So we, we weren't quite sure what we had. We, we knew there were some decent players returning, but there are also a lot of new parts um, to add. And uh, early in the year, it just wasn't 
uh, real clean product that, that we had. It was, um, you know, different lineups every day, and uh, we weren't sure where to go with the ball, who to pass it to, who was going to get the shots. And it just wasn't, wasn't a real crisp operation. Uh, but I think when we came back from Christmas, we zeroed in on a few things that uh, we had noticed up until that point that we, we thought, uh, you know, we could exploit. And uh, this group has just bought in and have, has taken off, um, you know, since that loss we took in early December, uh, you know, they've run the table. So uh, as a coach, that's, that's really all you can ask for. How about the, you start analyzing a lot as a coach, you have a lot of experience yeah. under your belt. And then as you say, you come back from Christmas, but talk about whether it's breaking down film, pushing these girls a little bit more, knowing when to pull back a little bit. Um, what was that, that learning process like for you? Well, to be honest with you, I think a lot of our challenges early on were the result of poor coaching. Um, we just weren't clear ourselves with how we wanted to play offensively, and as a result, there's no way the kids can be sure. And so we came back with a, with a much better idea and understanding of what we wanted to do. And then once we had the vision, we could, you know, get the kids to, to understand a little bit. Because we have, you know, we have talented kids and smart kids. So, um, you know, we zeroed in on some things. Uh, I think when we went away to, to Tennessee, um, you know, we put those things into motion and we had two really good wins out there and that just kind of, um, you know, helped us um, launch ourselves. Once we got back here, we've just taken off and uh, haven't looked back. Some of the girls alluded to uh, uh, defense, yeah. <laughs> all starts with defense and, yeah. and talk about, uh, you know, in your mind. Uh, defensively being sound and, and limited teams so whether it's 50 points or or what have you and, yeah. and, and some of the goals that you have as a program every yeah. game well that, that's certainly what we've built our program on um, I, I, I mentioned the offensive issues early on the reason we were still able to win games is because we defended every night and it gave ourselves a chance to win so uh, that's something that we believe in I've always believed in it as a coach and uh, this group has has bought in um, you know, for us, we really talk about some simple things. It's a team-oriented defense. It's really about getting our five people to guard their five people. Um, we, you know, we, we diagram the floor for them. We split the court up into different sections and explain to them when the ball's here, we guard it this way, when the ball's in this part of the court. And so we really break it down to the basic essentials of, of good team discipline defense. Uh, we probably harp on little things like staying in a stance and communication and uh, not reaching, not fouling. I know, you know one of our key components is we don't want to foul. We want to play really sound, fundamental, tough team defense without fouling because oftentimes fouling is what negates good defense. And so this group has done a good job with buying into those principles. Um, you know, and, and hopefully if we can continue to defend, we'll have a chance to win every night the rest of the year and, and hopefully that means in the NCAA tournament. You've had streaks before, uh, going back to last year. Um, and talk about, you know, not second-guessing yourself, but thinking about, okay, I need a little bit more of this, a little bit less of that. But as far as between now and whenever that end of the season is, yeah. um, what are a couple things you're, you're honing in on? Hey, we still could get better here. Yeah, I still think there are some pieces to our bench that could improve. Um, you know, we've had uh, some injuries and sickness throughout the course of the year. Um, you know, we had a broken finger, we had a knee issue, we've had mono, we've had... And so that has really put our rotations in flux. Um, our top five or six have been pretty steady, but after that was, was seemed to be a revolving door. Uh, we started to settle on um, a really strong eight or nine man rotation a every night. And, uh, but I still think there's some development that could happen that could help us even more. Um, Julia Gantz is, is now back for the last couple of games um, off of a, a recurring knee injury and she seems to be 100% healthy. I think if we can get her back in the fold and get her comfortable in the last four or five games of the year going into the playoffs, she'll be a big boost for us. Bridget Mann uh, st has stepped up uh, again this year in, in a different role. We'll yeah. talk about uh, her game and what she brings. Well, Bridget, Bridget's no... Um, you know, isn't a surprise. You know, if you asked me last year, what's the one thing you're sure about for next year would be that, you know, we know what we can expect from her, and she certainly hasn't hasn't let us down. Um, you know, she's assumed all the responsibility, to put it simply. Um, you know, she is our number one option. Everybody knows it. Every team's defense begins and ends with how do we defend her. 
uh, and she's been really good at uh, playing w inside the flow of the of the game, taking what the defense gives her, not trying to force it and you know uh, put pressure on herself to score 20 points a game. I think she averages 14 or 15 points a game, and uh, when you look at her her uh, stat line, she does it very efficiently. Uh, she still finds ways to get other people involved, but uh, no question. You know, every time we, we build an offensive game plan, it, it revolves around her, and then we fill in the pieces from there. For you uh, settling in, one more year under yeah. the belt as the women's basketball coach at the University of Scranton. Um, the bar was set really high with, uh, uh -huh. with Coach Strong and, and what he did there. And, of course, Dave Martin, uh, the athletic director, and the programs are growing at the U. And, and for you, uh, how do you feel like you're growing? Well, aside from the physical growth, which I'm trying to fight back against, uh, the, I think I'm definitely becoming more comfortable. Um, you know, there's always change is always difficult. Um, even when you're winning, it's difficult because it's just new and it uh, everything changes. Um, who you, you know, your daily interactions with the people around the office are completely different. Uh, your daily routines change. So, you know, that doesn't happen overnight. I think at this point. Um, you know, I'm the coach of the team, and you know, and it's less and less about well, you're the new coach. I'm just the coach, and these are my players, and you know, we try to be the best we can be every day together. And so, I think if there's one thing that I would say is it, it certainly feels like it's my team at this point, um, and you know, I couldn't be prouder of of what they've been able to accomplish at this point, and you know, our objectives, our goals are so much bigger than what we've done to this point that. Uh, we just got to continue to focus and do the things we've done and um, see how far we can take it. Well, that best is pretty darn good, Trevor. We yeah. appreciate your time. Keep up the great work. Thank you, John.